Hello everyone and welcome to another devlog video for Homegrown, the casual farming game I'm making using my own engine and this week I'm going to be getting started on the big graphical overhaul. So last week I finished version 0.2 of the game and it's getting to the point now where I'd like to be adding lots more content into the game, lots of new plants and vegetables and tools and to do that I'll need to add lots of models into the game and to do that I'd really like to know what the art style of the game should be because I haven't actually decided on that yet. Um, all of the models in the game so far are just placeholders and uh, I haven't really done any work on the graphics at all yet. So that's what this update is going to be. And just to quickly clarify what this update is and isn't, um, I'm not trying to polish up the game at this stage. I'm not going to be adding all the little tiny details and fancy visual effects and post-processing stuff. That's all going to come later, near the end of the project. For now, my main tasks are firstly just to decide on an art style so that I can start making models for the game that I'm not going to have to redo later in development. Secondly, I'll need to update my engine so that it can actually render this new art style, whatever that's going to be. And thirdly, I would just like to add a few basic graphical improvements to the game, um, just a few simple things like shadows and particle effects, stuff that the game's really been lacking so far. So that is the plan. And today, my first task is to decide on that art style. Ever since I started on this game, I've been on the lookout for inspiration for the art style. And uh, so whenever I've come across a picture of a game or some art that I liked, I've saved it so that I could use them as uh, inspiration for when I have to decide on the art style for this game, which obviously is what I'm doing now. So I've just been having a look through all of these, trying to get some ideas and uh, yeah, just trying to work out what art style I'm going to use. There's a few things I'm considering when deciding on the art style. Firstly, obviously, how does it look? That's probably the most, the, the main thing. Uh, it has to look good. But secondly, uh, I also have to consider whether it's an achievable art style for me as someone who's not an artist. Um, I'd rather choose an art style that's simple, that I can do really well rather than go for something that's way too ambitious that I'm just never going to properly achieve. And thirdly, I also need to consider how much work this art style is going to be, um, because I'm hoping to add quite a lot of different plants into the game, and it's going to make a big difference to me um, if I just have to make one model for each plant, or if I have to make uh, a model and a hand-painted texture and a specular map and a bump map and a unique animation for each plant, that would just end up taking so much longer for each plant and it's just going to end up with me not being able to add as much content into the game. Um, so there's definitely a balance I've got to find there. And then finally, always worth considering the performance. How fast am I going to be able to render this? It's probably not going to be too much of an issue in this game, but always worth keeping in mind. Anyway, I think I've got a few ideas now, so I'm going to jump into Blender and try out a few things. So I've been trying a few different things out in Blender, playing around a bit, and I've come up with a little scene, which is like the first draft of the draft of what the game's going to look like. So don't read into it too much, um, but I have used it to come up with a few kind of ground rules for the art style that I'm planning on using. Um, so first up, I'm not going to be using the usual low poly style that I've used in my previous games, and by that I mean being able to see all the individual triangles of each model. Um, I really like the low poly look, um, but I think it works best when all of the models appear very small in the game. For example, in the City Builder game, you're looking down at all the tiny little houses and people. I think low poly works really well there, um, but in this game, you're gonna be much closer to the action. You're going to be seeing the models much closer up. And I think in that case, low poly can sometimes look a little bit harsh and spiky, and it's just not quite the friendly feeling that I'm going for in this game. So I'm going to be still using a pretty similar uh, art style, but it's just going to have smooth shading, so it all looks a bit smoother and friendlier. I'm still going to be mostly using just block colours, um, so there's not much texturing being used, but this time um, I am going to have the option of adding a subtle texture over the top of the colours. 
Um, I've seen it done really well in other games. I haven't done it very well here, so this isn't a great example. But you can see it a bit on the house here, on the wall. There's some slight texturing and on the, um, the stone, the floor here, there's, you can see a bit of texturing. Um, the idea is that it's still very simplistic and minimalistic. It doesn't really change the simple look of the model too much. Um, but it's it's meant to kind of hint at the fact that this wall isn't completely flat. It is a bit textured, but without having to add a very noisy texture all over it. And finally, the last thing that I've been thinking about is all of the kind of little bits of, of clutter, all the little plants and bits of grass um, that I don't have in the game at all at the moment, uh, but I'm planning on adding. And I was mainly trying to decide whether I was going to go for a texture-based approach, so whether I'd just have uh, a load of quads with images of plants on them, or whether I'd actually create the plants from meshes. And as you can see, I think I'm going to go with the mesh option. I just think it fits a little bit better with this art style. And I'm not too worried about the performance because most of these can be instance rendered, so that will be very fast anyway. So I think this is enough for me to get started on, so I'm going to get into the engine code now and start adding support for all of the things that I just mentioned. So it's actually a few days later now, um, I've been doing loads of work on the file format that my game uses to store mesh information about the models, because with the new art style the model files are going to need to support some different features that they didn't support before. So I've just been updating the model format, you can see an example of one of the model files here, this is for one of the tree models. And I've also been doing loads of work on my entity creator program here. Um, I would like to have some proper UI for this at one point and actually show a 3D view of the entity, but just text will have to do for now. And this program allows me to create new entities for the game, and it also allows me to add models to those entities, which is what I'm doing here. It takes in OBJ files, which I've exported from Blender, it then converts that into the model format that my game uses, and then exports those model files into the relevant entities folder. Over the last couple of days I've also been thinking a bit more about the art style again because I wasn't totally happy with that last draft that I showed you, so I tried out a few more things and I've come up with another scene in Blender which I'm pretty happy with. Um, it's a bit more of a, a cleaner, simpler look, a little bit cartoony, which I think could work quite well with the casual nature of the game, plus I think I'd be able to do this art style better. It doesn't have any textures, which are just I'm just not very good at making textures, as you saw from the previous uh, draft that I showed you. So other games might be able to do that subtle texture look, but I just don't think I'd be able to pull it off properly. So this is a bit of a safer art style for me to go to, but I do also think that it looks really nice, but let me know what you think, I'd love to hear your feedback on it. And of course this is still just a very rough first draft, um, getting the graphics right is going to be a long iterative process of lots of small improvements between now and the release of the game, so I'm sure it will end up looking much better than this, but I think this is a a good place to start from. This morning I've been setting up the rendering system so that I can get these models rendered in the game. So first I convert all of that model data, all of the vertex data, into a load of bytes so that it can be stored in video memory. And then I've just been programming a really simple rendering process here, pretty much the same as before. Um, the only big difference is that now that I'm using smooth shading for the models, it makes more sense to use indexed rendering, for those of you who know what that is. Um, so I made that change and I'm just testing it's all working here with this hard-coded cube. And next I'm going to get it working with the imported models. So I got the entity importing working and I've now loaded up a few of the new models into the game. I just scattered them around randomly for now, and there's absolutely no lighting or shading in the game at the moment. I thought I'd just remove that and start from scratch there. Um, as I said, my aim for this update is not to perfect the lighting just yet, but I do want to get it off to a good start. So I think first my aim is just going to get it to look like it does in Blender at the moment, and then after that we can go from there. That will be a good starting place, and then in the future I can implement some more complex shading techniques and hopefully get it looking even better.
I've been working in the Shady Code, getting all of these lighting calculations set up for ages now. I feel like I could spend hours just tweaking and fine-tuning these, but I've got to move on at some point. And I'm pretty satisfied with the result that I've got at the moment. So let me just quickly show you all of the components of this lighting. So this is what it looks like without any lighting, obviously. Then this is the kind of general lighting from the sky, which lights up the whole model, but uh, affects the surfaces that are facing upwards more. Then this is bounce lighting. You can see it just on the underside of the models there. This is simulating the light that's bouncing off the terrain and lighting up the bottom of the models. Then this is just the sunlight, just some standard diffused lighting. And then for any materials that I set to be shiny, I also have rim lighting. You can see that around the edges of the models that shows up on uh, surfaces that you're looking at kind of side on. So it's basically a Fresnel effect. Then there's the reflection of the sky. It's a bit subtle. You can't really see it on here. Um, you can see it better on this sphere here at the top. This circle is just a reflection of the sky dome. And then finally, there's the reflection of the sun or specular highlight. So that's all of the lighting stuff for now, except for shadows, but I'm saving them for next week. Next up, doing a bit more work in the shaders, this time in the vertex shader. I want to add a wind effect to the trees and the plants to make it look like they're swaying around gently in the breeze. And uh, I'm doing that by adding a slight moving distortion to the vertex positions. So in the game, it looks like this, which is a good start, but there's a couple of issues with it. Firstly, with the tree here, you can see that the, the trunk and the branches are also moving around the same amount as the leaves, when ideally they should be moving around a bit less than the leaves. And also the bottom of the models is also moving around a lot, when that should really be fixed still in the ground. Also the house is moving around, which is a bit weird. So to fix those issues, I am now calculating the amplitude of the distortion based on the height of the vertex and the flexibility of the material. And this is just a number between 0 and 1 that I can set for each material to choose which parts of the model are more affected by the wind. And here it is in the game, all working nicely now. Today I'm getting started with the next part of this update, which is to remake all of the models for all of the content that's currently in the game. So I've been getting started on that and just getting used to modelling with this new art style. The biggest difference obviously being that I have to make everything look very nice and smooth with no hard edges, which is pretty much the exact opposite of what I've always done previously with the old low poly look. And I've just been having another go at the house model this morning because my last attempt uh, there were still lots of hard edges. I hadn't really worked out how to do curved edges yet, but I learned how to do that this morning. So I've been rounding out all of the edges to make it all look a little bit smoother. It's taken a couple of days, but I'm pretty much finished redoing all of the models in the new art style, and I'm very satisfied. I really like how the vegetables look now. I think they look great in this new art style. Definitely a big improvement to, to how they looked before. Um, everything else looks pretty good too. I'm satisfied. I mean, obviously there's still a long way to go with the graphical update. This is only part one. Um, the next big things that I'm going to be working on are shadows. That will make a big difference. Um, here's a little scene I made in Blender to show you how that will hopefully look once I've done that. And then I also need to do something more with the terrain. I'm not really sure what because I want to keep it simple, but also at the moment it's a bit too plain. So I'll do something there. And then obviously the colours and lighting can be tweaked as well. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback on anything to do with the art style. Um, I just want to hear what you think of it and what you think I could improve. So please do let me know. But in general, I'm very satisfied with how things have gone so far. It's uh, a good start.
So that is going to be it for this video. Before I finish, I want to give a big shout out to the top Patreon supporters from last month, who were Alex, Frederick Darlin, Dave Handley, Chris Naismith, TRC Terracoin, Seven Sign Bits, Albert Gutierrez, Alan Lance, Yuri Kranovic, Josiah Hillman, Busfar Valter, Dieter Reinert, Harry Chung, Christoph Hoppo, Adam Farkas, Gregory Horvath, Hagen Vingard, Matthew Connerton, Leandro Di Pietro, Andrew Witt, Marek Mikolajczyk, Sean McCrory, Caffeine Coda, Timothy Gibbons, Alexander Chavez, and Neil Blakey Milner. So a massive thank you to you guys, and of course to everyone else supporting me over on Patreon. For this week though, that is it, so thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time.